Welcome everyone to Gamer Melt. Today I've got some really big stories that I'm excited to cover, starting with GPUs flooding the market. Intel's GPUs are getting even cheaper, Nvidia just got rid of these GPUs, Nvidia quietly released a 4090 that's worse, and AMD claims they can beat the 4090. But first, with new CPUs and GPUs coming out, make sure you're ready with Meld Alerts. The completely free sign-up that sends you an email when new PC hardware is releasing. Because let's be honest, keeping up with all the new PC hardware releases can be tricky. And don't worry, I'll only tell you important stuff like CPUs, GPUs, etc. Plus, I'll send you great deals as those come out as well. That way, you won't have to worry when new PC hardware is releasing. So yeah, it's completely free at MeldAlerts.com and it only takes you a couple seconds. So make sure to check that out below. Okay, it's news time and first up for today, we have a really interesting story from Tom's Hardware. As you can see down here, it says a number of little known suppliers of graphics cards that used to sell their products on various China-based marketplaces are now available in the US via Amazon and Newegg. According to them, this happened right around the same time cryptocurrencies crashed. Basically, GPU makers that were selling GPUs left and right in China because they were selling it to miners have now been forced to try and find ways to sell these GPUs and because of that, they're effectively turning to the US market. And this honestly could be a very good thing. As usual, competition in the market is great for consumers. Basically, you'll have all of these GPU makers coming in that will be competing with MSI, Zeus, Gigabyte, all of the bigger, more well-known brands. And if they're really able to undercut their price, they could force those bigger companies to lower their pricing as well. Now, according to this, some GPU makers are a little bit more expensive, some are a little bit cheaper. You have right here, for example, this 3070 is priced at $459 at Newegg, while Gigabyte's Eagle 3070 retails for $499. Now, there is an obvious issue with this, Given these brands aren't as well known, aren't as big and things like that, if you come across an issue, there's not a huge guarantee that their customer support is going to be all that great. So there definitely are going to be downsides to purchasing these, but if they're able to undercut the major suppliers more and more, that could force them to lower their prices as well. Of course, right now we're not looking at a huge difference in price, but even still, I personally think this is a good thing. And speaking of competition and better prices, it looks like Intel is not done with lowering prices of their GPUs. As you can see right here, Intel's Arc A770 GPU just dropped $270 US. Remember that not long ago, Intel actually announced that they'd be lowering the price of their A750 to $250, but at least for now, you can actually purchase an ASRock Phantom Arc A770 for just $20 more. Not only that, but you actually get two games plus five creative apps, which is apparently a $490 plus value, although I believe it's these apps down here, which they're currently selling for $100, but regardless, you're getting these for free, and it's already a great deal of a GPU. Remember that the A750 already challenges Nvidia's 3060 fairly well, and actually beats it in quite a bit of games. Well, this is the step up from that, for just 270 bucks. And of course, if you're interested in this, I'll have an affiliate link in the description below. It won't cost you anything more and it helps the channel out. And next up for today, while speaking GPUs, it looks like Nvidia may in fact be completely done with selling their RTX 30 series Founders Edition cards. The story was originally posted by Cal Kotlin and as you can see right here, when we actually select all of, well, if we take away the 40, although even those I'm pretty sure don't show up, but basically if we select all of the 30 series cards, we can see that there are zero NVIDIA GPUs for these 30 cards, meaning they're Founders Edition cards. And when we go back here, this is not just the US, this is apparently the US, UK, Germany, France, and Spain. They no longer list any of the 30 series cards. I believe I also have the UK up here as well. You can see I selected all these 30 and yeah, some 40s, but those don't have Founders Edition anyway. But when we look, NVIDIA has zero. 
Of course, third-party cards are available. We can see Acer, Alienware, things like that. But specifically, cards from NVIDIA are apparently non-existent. And of course, with the 40 series cards having been released, this isn't too much of a surprise, but the simple fact is that we don't have lower end 40 series cards even now. They obviously did release mid range mobile variants, but that's it. There isn't a 4060 or 4050 or anything like that, at least as of now. There's still just the 4070 Ti. So it is interesting to see Nvidia make this move, but I will say that it does make me think that their more mid range 40 series cards are expected fairly soon. And next up, if you remember a little while back, I actually covered a story that claimed that Nvidia was going to be releasing a new variant for their RTX 4080. According to the story, that was because they were going to be removing a small and cheap component called the comparator circuit. This led me to Igor's lab who claimed that the reason they were removing this, some people were saying, oh, it's because of the price, it'll make it cheaper, things like that. But apparently it's only gonna be like a few dollars if that. But according to Igor's lab, there was apparently a bug that affected fan speed of the card and they needed to use that chip to basically fix it, though not really fix it. And this 8103-301 was going to be the ultimate fix where they didn't have to use that component. Well, the odd thing is that according to a new post from Reddit and later reported by Tom's Hardware, they actually found a new GPU variant for the RTX 4090. According to the poster, it states, I received one of the new batches of the 4090. This one, by the way, is 8102-301-A1. And they say it right here. You can see that they claim that this 301 comes with a limited maximum voltage of 1.07 volts, while the original 8102-300 supports a maximum voltage of 1.1 volts. Now, obviously this isn't some huge deal or anything like that, and it's really only going to affect overclockers. You're still going to be within the spec of the 4090 that Nvidia states, but as they state right here, it says Nvidia quietly rolled out the 4090 with a new die. That is a bit disheartening. Simply put, if you watch some reviews that included overclocking of the card and you expected it to get something, it may not get as high. With that said, it's really not a big difference. You can see here that they claimed I can get 3015 megahertz stable at 1.070 volts, but as they state, having the extra headroom is always welcome for stability. So ultimately, this isn't a giant deal. You aren't going to see a massive dip and FPS or anything along those lines. But once again, it just is a little bit disheartening that they do this without telling us. And if you're big on overclocking, you may see a difference. With that said, there is one thing I'd want to point out. This is only one Reddit user so far. Now these cards have likely only just been released. So we easily will almost certainly see more of these cards later on. But for now, this is only seen in one Redditor. So maybe this is a fluke and it has nothing to do with 8102-301, but at least for now, it definitely seems to be the case. And lastly for today, Hamdi just said something that's pretty surprising and interesting all at the same time. As you can see right here from WCCF Tech, during an interview with IT Media, Andy's EVP Rick Bergman and AMD SVP David Wang sat to discuss their goals with the RDNA 3 and CDNA 3 architectures. And what they asked was basically why AMD didn't release an RDNA 3 GPU under its 7000 lineup that competes with the RTX 4090. And their answer is really interesting. You can see that uh, AMD's EVP Rick Bergman replied with, technically it is possible to develop a GPU with specs that competes with their NVIDIA's GPU. However, the GPU developed in this way was introduced to the market as a graphics card with a TDP of 600 watts and a reference price of $1,600 and was accepted by general PC gaming fans. After thinking about it, we chose not to adopt such a strategy. Basically, at least according to Rick Bergman, AMD could have made an RTX 4090 GPU, but they simply chose not to because it would take tons of wattage, cost a ton of money, things like that. And of course, I do understand that, but also I will say 
that we've learned that NVIDIA's 40 series cards are incredibly efficient. So ultimately it may have just looked really bad for AMD because they would have had to have pushed the wattage even further than NVIDIA. With that said, that's obviously just a guess, but it is at least interesting that according to AMD, they could have released a GPU to compete with NVIDIA's RTX 4090. So while that does it for today, do you think AMD could have really beaten the RTX 4090? Let me know down in the comments below. And of course, if I did ramble too much, I know I do that a lot in these talking head videos, but a lot of you actually mentioned that you do like me doing these and there were a ton of stories, so I thought I'd go ahead and do one, but don't worry for those of you who don't like these style videos, I'm gonna be back to my normal video in the next one. Either way, if you liked the video, please give it a thumbs up and make sure to subscribe. And as always, have a great day.